Welcome to another Unit Circle Survival Guide. Today we're going to be looking at 45, 45, 90 special right triangles and how we can use them in the unit circle. So here's a unit circle where we will just be focusing on the angles that have a 45 degree angle. And so you can see that's we've taken away a lot of the stuff that's in a unit circle and we're focusing in on those 45 degree angles. So let's go ahead and label those. We have 45 degrees, 135, 225, and 315. And I'll have a link for a video on how you can label all the angles of a unit circle if you are interested in that. I'll put that in the video description. And we also can label in radians. So we know that that would be pi over four in the first quadrant, three pi over four here in second, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. Okay. So we have all of that. These are the angles that we're talking about. And we're really going to focus today on how do we find these ordered pairs? Because these are gonna be really important when we start evaluating exact values. We wanna know some trig ratios by heart. That's the whole reason that we learn the unit circle. So we're going to find these ordered pairs using our 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. So let's draw that triangle in first, and then we'll remind ourselves what are those uh, side ratios for that triangle. So we know our unit circle is centered on the origin in its standard position. And let's draw a triangle here. We know its radius is one. We're gonna make use of that fact. And let's draw ourselves a right triangle here, closing it in with that initial side on the positive x-axis. Okay. So we know this angle here is 45 degrees. We have the other labeled as 90, so clearly this one up here must be 45 because we know angles of a triangle sum to 180. So let's out to the side draw a special right triangle, a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we'll look at those side relationships so that we can find the relationships we have for this specific triangle. All right, so here's a 45. 45, 90 triangle. And we know that the two legs are equal, they're opposite, the same angle, 45. So we'll label these x, and then the hypotenuse is going to be x times the square root of two. And this is a really great concept to review in general, you'll see this in so many different areas. We make use of this fact, these facts all the time. Okay, so going back to our triangle on the unit circle, we said that the radius of a unit circle is one. It's designed very intentionally. So here's a radius, it's our hypotenuse. Let's label it one. So knowing one of the sides now, we know the hypotenuse, we can actually find the others because we know their relationship to each other. Okay, so all we have to do is say, to find out the legs, we wanna find x. So we say for the hypotenuse, one equals x times the square root of two. Of course, divide both sides by two and we get one over root two equals x, or when you rationalize that, and to rationalize, you just multiply by square root two over square root two, and we end up with square root of two over two is x. So our two legs of our triangle are equal to square root of two over two. So now that we know the length of these two legs, we can easily find that ordered pair. So we're trying to find this coordinate and it's away from the origin. So all we have to do is move to the right, the length of one of the legs. So square root of two over two and also up square root of two over two. So the coordinates for this 45 degree angle or this pi over four radian angle are root two over two comma root two over two. So now that we found the ordered pair in the first quadrant, we can actually very easily fill in the coordinates for the other three ordered pairs. All we need to know about are reference angles. And so what that means, a reference angle is just the amount of rotation to get back to the X axis. And so look, let's draw another triangle in the second quadrant, for example. Notice that we have the exact same triangle that we had in the first quadrant. It's just been flipped over the y-axis. So of course the leg lengths stay the same, 
but we just have to note the negative horizontal direction. So we have those coordinates and we can label negative square root two over two and positive square root two over two. All right, so then similarly, we can orient that triangle in the third quadrant, another 45, 45, 90 with a hypotenuse of one. And I'll go ahead, same thing in the fourth quadrant. So the triangle is the same, it's just reoriented. And all we have to do is adjust our signs. So in the third quadrant, of course, both coordinates are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, we know we went in the positive x direction and the negative y direction. So now we have all of our 45 degree reference angles with coordinates filled in. And hopefully you can see really you just need to know the first quadrant and then you can find whatever you need and adjust the sign. So for example, let's find the sine and cosine and tangent of 45 degrees um, or pi over four. So say you wanted to find the cosine of 45 degrees. Well, our trig ratios tell us that the cosine ratio is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And so we know that our adjacent side, we're looking at this angle, our adjacent side is square root two over two and our hypotenuse is one. So there's that intentional design of the unit circle. Notice that the cosine is just the X coordinate. That'll happen on the unit circle every single time. All right, let's say we were wanting to find the sine of 45. Okay, we know the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Uh, that will be square root of two over two over one. And so thus just the Y coordinate for this unit circle. And then finally, let's say we wanted to find the tangent. Note that it could be the tangent of pi over four. That's the same thing as the tangent of 45 degrees. So we know the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. So that would be root two over two divided by root two over two. So a number divided by itself is just one. And so these are our exact values. They are simply ratios of sides of triangles. Do notice if you were finding exact values for an angle that was not in the first quadrant, you would want to be very careful about the sign. Um, is it positive or is it negative? And just think about where is it located on a quadrant system. So should the x coordinate be positive or negative? Should the y coordinate be positive or negative? And we'll get into that a lot later. All right, so this was a review of 45, 45, 90 triangles and how we can use them to find coordinates in the unit circle. Check out the other videos on special right triangles and how we use them in the unit circle. I'll have some other videos on labeling the unit circle angles in degrees or in radians um, and so much more. So thanks so much for watching and good luck.